Hello there. Uh, first off, I just wanted to give a shout out to Matthew West and Sean Lazama. Uh, thank you for the donations. Uh, it's not necessary to donate to watch the channel, but it's very much appreciated. So thanks, thanks guys. Uh, then I want to move on and talk a little bit about uh, starting out in blacksmithing. And I get a lot of people asking me, you know, what how they should go about it and how they should start and what's what what they need. And the advice I often give, and I've given this to a lot of people, is in the beginning, I think, just keep it simple at first. Blacksmithing at its core doesn't have to be complicated. You know, with a few techniques and using those properly, you can accomplish a lot. And as far as tooling, you know, I always like to say like this, that, you know, you need something to heat with, a forge. Be that charcoal or coal or, you know, gas, propane or natural gas. Uh, maybe even an in, in induction forge, I don't know. But typically for people starting out, it'd probably be either coal or propane. So something to heat with, a forge. Then something to hold with. Now, the most basic thing is your hand or maybe a gloved hand. And then if pe pieces are too short, then tongs. So something to heat with, forge. Something to hold with, hand or tongs. Uh, something to hammer on, anvil or anvil-like object and something to hammer with or hit with a hammer so it's just that simple those four things with those four things and with uh, after you've learned proper technique you, you really can create a lot of things now from there you're probably going to want to you know maybe change things up maybe uh, in, uh, use different tooling and then you might move on to you know maybe making it a little bit more complicated from that point but once you've mastered uh, a, a certain amount of, once you've reached a certain skill level with those tools, you should be able to do quite a bit. And then, like I said, you can go on from there. And one, one tool that you might consider, you know, maybe a little bit down the line, is, uh, is a guillotine tool, which is, you know, something like this here that I, this is something that I make, and I just wanted to uh, reintroduce this. So what I'll do is I'll, uh, let me come in with the camera and, and maybe show this a little bit closer and then uh, people can get a better idea. So uh, this is my guillotine tool and you know I've made some adjustments to this so I just figured I wanted, uh, I'd like to reintroduce this. So basically it's just it's very simple it's just a guide you know it's just I, I you know forge these brackets out and then weld it onto a shank and then the shank uh, at the bottom end is suitable for different hardy diameters. So this is, you know, for three quarters. So it fits my anvil fine. And then for the shanks, I can make it in sizes up to an inch and a quarter. You know, like even seven eighths and fifteen sixteenths, one inch, one and an eighth, and one and a quarter. So, and what I've done uh, to change this a bit, I wait till that motorcycle goes by. What I've done is uh, I've actually uh, recessed. You know, I've hammered in a uh, depression on the top and bottom ends, and mainly the top end because that just gives it a little bit more throat opening. So, for example, with these, you know, these are flat dies, and by the way, the, the dies are medium carbon steel. So the, uh, the bottom die fits in like this, and then the top die like such. And then before, without this recess, uh, I didn't have quite, just maybe had maybe an inch of throat opening, you know, when this is all the way up. So as it stands now, you know this piece is inch and a half so that will fit in no problem then you know so then you can uh, you know you hammer on the top end here it's just that simple it's just a very simple tool but you you'd be surprised how hard this is to get right so anyway for guys who are maybe working on wider flat stock this small guillotine tool now becomes a little bit more handy and uh, then the other die set the other dies that I offer with this are uh, are these fuller dies which I offset to one side because it just makes it easier to locate you know when you're putting your stock in and you can have this facing you or facing away like this or you can even do it in an offset manner so you know so the, the die sets obviously is this you know the flat and then the fuller and I like to have it in like this facing away from me typically and then it just it helps me to locate in here when I'm putting stock in and because this is open here that also gives you good visuals and that's why I put the uh, depression on the bottom one too just a little bit extra uh, you know easier to, to see what you're doing 
but the you know and the top recess here is mainly just like I said to make sure I can fit in stock that's an inch and a half wide. So yeah, this is some kind. This is a tool that you know you don't need, you know, but this might be something that you find handy. For me personally, um, I don't use a lot of tools at all. And when people see my workspace, they're always surprised. And you know, knowing how long I've been blacksmithing, but I'm I'm very much a minimalist. And I always have been in every aspect of my life, and that obviously carries over into blacksmithing. But there are some tools, you know, some conveniences that I find, you know, I, I don't like to work without. And this is definitely one of them. And this is the reason why I offer this tool, because I just feel that, uh, you know, for certain kinds of work, it, it can be invaluable. So if you're thinking about one, yeah, just let me know. And what I'll do now is I'll just, uh, you know, let me, I want to heat up my forge, and I want it to... Uh, you know, try a new pair of tongs that I made for myself, and also, uh, you know, maybe I'll uh, work on some stock uh, and show you this guillotine tool and, and, you know, maybe one operation. This is one of my uh, bent knee tongs, and this is bent knee for, for flat. And this really is my preferred style of tongue. This one is a little bit longer than I'm normally used to, but this is my standard length, which is close to about 12 inches. If people would like tongs longer, I can make them longer, but this is just my personal preference. If you uh, use a forge that, uh, you know, is a big gas forge and you need to reach in quite a ways, then, you know, I could probably make you a longer pickup tongue and then, you know, where you can get stuff close to the edge and then pick it up with a shorter, more stout tongue something like this. So, you know, here I've got, uh, I'm just going to quickly demonstrate the guillotine tool. Got the fuller dies in, and then this is a piece of one inch by one quarter. And then you can see, uh, you know, how this tongue holds. You know, it can pass by the jaw like that. So you can hold it, you know, at the end here, you can hold it close to here, just as long as your hand is not so close to the hot metal, then you're fine. So, you know, this style is very useful. I mean, you can hammer on the flat, or you could hammer on edge, so that's what makes this style uh, very useful. So I'll, uh, yeah, let me heat this piece up, and then we'll uh, see how it works. You know, and I rate made this tongue for myself because recently I, fa I find that, uh, you know, I'm, I want to use flat stock more, and I don't have tongs specifically for flat stock to hold on edge. So, yeah, let's get it going. I apologize for my anvils shaking quite a bit, especially the small one. I had the thicker rubber pads beneath them, which I normally take out when I'm making a video so they just don't jump around like that. Also, I'm really monkeying around on this piece, just uh, forming, just basically forming a tang. Uh, I just, uh, I should, should have first tapered the piece before fullering, because what happens is, is if you start to hammer from, a, you know, from the when the piece is on edge and there's a lot of material being compressed, it'll form a cold shut. If you don't, you know, consequently uh, work it from on edge and then work it flat, work it on edge and then flat. I worked it on edge too much and as you'll see here when I hold it up a little bit, you can see the beginnings of a cold shut. A 
I'm gonna redo this tang or try another piece a little bit later in this video. Here I'm using a wider radius bottom die with a flat die on top. This is the typical handle end treatment I, I do for my tongs. So just a quick few taps and then you'll see a depression which will face outward on the tongue handle. It's not meant to be used with a keeper, you know, a ring. Just a, just a locate thing that my pinky can actually fit in and then, you know, I know where I'm at on the tongue. So you can see here, uh, before I form the tang, before I fuller it on this piece of flat, I'm first tapering that end, which is probably the wiser decision. And like I had explained earlier, is that uh, you know when you're working with a piece that's not even all around, like a flat piece, you know, a rectangular piece, then you might uh, create cold shuts if you're hammering it on edge too much and then not flattening it out, not smoothing out those lines and you might get a cold shut. So it's wiser here to first taper that a bit and then start to fuller for where the tank is going to be. I'm switching to flat dies uh, just to uh, I'm gonna leave that area that I fullered uh, as a spot where I can put my mark on and then where I'm gonna use these flat dies would be where the uh, the actual tang will begin <clears throat> don't ask me why I'm not a blade maker um, you know in this uh, in this instance here I just wanted to kind of show you guys the guillotine tool and, and also the tongue see here like I'm just going back a little or a little down more and then starting the actual tang there you'll get the idea um, you know but uh, you know for this video I'd say I give the tongue an A I give the guillotine tool a B and I, I give my my technique uh, a C minus so yeah anyway you get the idea
here I'm putting my mark on that little rosebud that's uh, between the tang where the handle will be and uh, it's in the transition to where the blade, I'm, you know, I assume like this could be a dagger and where the, you know, the dagger and, you know, I guess some people call ricasso. I'm not exactly sure, but somewhere in that transition area right there. So you'll see when, uh, when I'm done, I'll, I'll give a close up so you can see. Here you can see the versatility of this type of tongue. I'm able to turn this piece around and still able to grasp it from the one inch width. So if I was to work the blade end then, assuming this was to be some sort of a blade. Here are two, well, actually three different and very interesting touch marks. As you can see here, there's one larger with wording and one smaller without. Hope you enjoyed.